اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین العاقبت للمتقین ولا عدوانا الا على الظالمین ونشد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له ونشد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآله كما صليت على إبراهيم وآله وبارك على محمد وآله كما باركت على إبراهيم وآله إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Tunaendelea na darasa zetu za tafsiri ya Qur'an tukufu. Na kama mlivyonikumbusha tunaendelea na tafsiri ya suratun namli Na leo tunaanza inshaallah taala aya ya 67. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa qala alladhina kafaru a idha kunna turaban wa aba'una أئنا لمخرجون لقد وعدنا هذا نحن وآباؤنا من قبل إن هذا إلا أساطير الأولين قل سيروا في الأرض فانظروا كيف كان عاقبة المجرمين ولا تحزن عليهم ولا تكن في ضيق مما يمكرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل عسى أن يكون ردف لكم بعض الذي تستعجلون وإن ربك لذو فضل على الناس ولكن أكثرهم لا يشكرون وإن ربك لا يعلم ما تكن صدورهم وما يعلنون وما من غائبة في السماء والأرض إلا في كتاب مبين إن هذا القرآن يقص على بني إسرائيل أكثر الذي هم فيه يختلفون وإنه لهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين إن ربك يقضي بينهم بحكمه وهو العزيز العليم فتوكل على الله إنك على الحق المبين إنك لا تسمع الموتى ولا تسمع السم الدعاء إذا ولوا مدبرين وما أنت بهذه العمي عن ضلالتهم إن تسمع إلا من يؤمن بآياتنا فهم مسلمون تويكي لنغو كوني آية يا ثمانيني نموجا إن شاء الله تعالى كما تتباكي وانا وقاتي تتاكوينا كوني مسوالي نمجيب لكني تشوكي نهيزي آية ستيني نسابا باكا ثمانيني نموجا آية نينكي كوني لكني دو Shire furefu ni fubi hubi Kwa hivu asa zita kuenda mzuri tu Wakala alathina kafaru Na wamesema wale walio kufuru Na hii Nuitabia kwa hivu kusema manino kama haya Yatake unukuliwa hapa Qur'ani inanuku maneno ya watu Wanao ipinga Qur'ani Halafu inajibu. Na wakati mwingine inakuwa chewe mwenye utafakari tu. Hasa ikionekana kuwa maneno hayo hayana hoja nzito ya kumbebeisha mtu. Na hili ni jambo linalothibitisha kuwa Qur'ani ni kitabu ambacho hakina shaka wala wasiwasi. Kwa sababu ikiwa anayekupinga pia unamnukuu ndani ya kitabu chako na yule ambaye hamkubaliani pia unamnukuu ndani ya kitabu chako basi ujue jambo hilo ni kubwa sana ni jambo la kujiamini mara nyingi katika ushindani mtu hapendi kunukuu maneno ya mpinzani wake wala kuyaingiza katika hotuba yake na misimamo yake na kama atayaleta basi atayaleta kwa kuyapinga tu na kuyavunja vunja Hampi haki yule anayempinga kuzungumza kile ambacho anakiamini yeye dhidi ya huyo msemaji 
ya Qur'ani ni kitabu kenye uhuru mkubwa sana lakini ndio baadhi ya watu kwa kuwa hawakijui wanakiona kama kitabu chenye kuwabana watu wakiwabana hata unacho una, una, una kipinga kitabu lakini Qur'ani inasema unavyopinga alafu inakujibu katika huo upinzani upinzani wako ndizo anasema Mwenyezi Mungu wa qala alladhina kafaru na wakasema wale waliokufuru ambao hawakubali Qur'ani tena kwa kejeli naenda aidha kunna turaban ye tutakapokwisha kuwa mchanga aidha kunna a maana keje isifahamu idha kunna tutakapokwisha kuwa turaban mchanga maana ke binadamu akifa atazikwa au hata akitukwa atazaga kwenye ardhi lakini mwisho ataoza akichaoza atachanganyika na udongo mchanga atakuwa ni sehemu ya huo udongo au sehemu ya huo nini mchanga wao wameamini kuwa anakuwa mchanga moja kwa moja sio mchanga wa kuzaliwa sisi tunasema mtoto mchanga maana yake aliyezaliwa mchanga huu mchanga ulioko kwenye ardhi ndio turabu na wao hawakuwa wakiamini kwa binadamu kaumbwa kutokana na ardhi au kutokana na mchanga ndio kabisa aidha basi tutakapokuja kuwa kuna tukawa turaba na mchanga maana yake tukishakufa tukaoza tukawa sehemu ya ardhi wa abauna na wale baba zetu walio tutangulia pia ambao tayari wameshakuwa mchanga wao anakusudia wazazi wetu walio tangulia nyuma mababa na mababu na nani aina je hakika kweli la mukhrajuna sisi tutatolewa tena aina je hakika sisi la kweli mukhrajuna tutatolewa huko kwenye ardhi turudi tena tuwe watu mbona jambo hili gumu sana kukubalika kwenye akili kwa hivyo wanahoji wana wanahoji wana katika imani zetu za dini ya Kiislamu Quran it doesn't fear to court it is enemy and opposes because it's a book of confidence it's very rare to find a person or a book quoting it is enemy as the enemy says against itself it's very rare but quran here it quotes statement of blasphemers those they don't believe in quran and they challenge it quran they challenge quran they say when we were already died and been sent it is really that we can get out of that sand again and be human being walking and doing this is statement of blasphemers non muslims against the islam but quran also it quotes them and bring it in the quran and then reply them hmm? giving them the answer lakadu waidna wanaendelea makafiri kusema kwa hakika tumewaahidiwa tumeahidiwa hadha jambo hili nahnu sisi wa abauna na hao baba zetu min qablu tangu mwanzo si leo qurani haisemi jipya tumeahidiwa kwamba tutarudi tena duniani baba zetu wameahidiwa lakini tunahesabu vizazi na vizazi hatumoni aliyerudi mpaka leo yani wao wanataka labda vile kurudishwa iwe babu yako karudi tena umemkua alikufa baada ya miaka 10 na rudi tena unamkuta unafikiri hivyo laqad wa'idna kweli hakika tumeahidiwa hadha jambo hili la kufuguliwa nahnu sisi wa abauna na baba zetu min qablu tangu mwanzo huko nyuma kabla ya hii qurani kuteremka kabla ya huyu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kuja akasema kwa yeye ni mtume mambo haya pia tumeambiwa huko nyuma in hadha si lolote jambo hili la kusema tutafufuliwa illa isipokuwa asafiru lawalina paukwa pakawa 
za watu wa mwanzo in hadha in bimaana ma ini nafia aima hadha si lolote hili tunaloambiwa kwa tutafufuliwa si lolote hili illa isbukuwa asatiru paukwa pakawa hadithi story asatir ni maneno yasioaminika ya kuhadisiana tu watu baada ya kushiba zamani ndo tulikuwa tuna hiyo paukwa pakawa siku hizi ukisema paukwa pakawa baadhi ya vijana wanatumbua macho atawajui maana paukwa pakawa ni kitu gani kwa sababu zamani wanakaa mababu na mabibi kuwapa hadithi za kutunga watoto wa jukuu zao wanasema paukwa na wale wanajibu nini pakawa hapo zamani za kale pale ondokea fisi na sungura inakuja hadithi inaitwa paukwa pakawa unaweza kusema hadithi simulizi story ndo paukwa pakawa mimi wakati mwingine utumia maksudi hichi Kiswahili cha zamani ili kujikumbusha mimi na wenzangu na kuwasaidia kizazi kipya wasipoteze misamiati na neno paukwa manake panaondokwa na pakawa manake panakaliwa sasa uka manake ondoka pemba inatumika uka kwa maana uondoka na makunduchi pia inatumika uka hapo <laughs> ondoka hapa eh uka na pakawa manake panakaliwa panaondokwa panakaliwa au bandika bandua ukiondoa hili weka hili lakini neno zima pa uko pakawa manake hadithi story na aghlabu zinakuwa si za kweli lakini zina zinaburudisha tu sasa wanasema na hii habari ya kufufuliwa ni pa uko pakawa hadithi tu story tu za kufurahisha watu lakini si kweli inaadha si lolote jambo hili la kuambiwa tutafufuliwa ila isipokuwa satiru la walina pa uko pakawa za watu wa mwanzo wazee wa zamani hadithi za wazee wa zamani kudanganya wajukuu zao basi amna lot hakuna kufufuliwa sio tu wamepinga lakini wamekejeli maana kama mtu anaweza kupinga katumia lugha ya kistarabu lakini wanaweza kupinga wakatumia lugha ya kifedhuli kama hawa sasa wamepinga kufufuliwa na wametumia lugha ya kifei ya kifedhuli laqad wa inna hadha we had been promised this nahnu we wa abauna and our fathers min qablu from the beginning in hadha this is not except illa asatirul awwalin stories of old people blasphemy they say to be created again is just a rubbish story of old people it's not a real thing eh this is opposing on one hand and humiliating or making mockery on another on another hand but quran tolerates them but prophet muhammad listen to them and then it will reply them ha huh? qul sema sasa uwajibu hawa shiru fil ardi nendeni katika dunia mshikae mahala pamoja nyinyi wakati mwingine kukaa mahala pamoja kuna sababisha watu kuwa na mawazo mgando kutoka kunasaidia unakwenda kuona hili na lile mengine kwenu hayapo unayakuta upande wa pili kwa hivyo kunasaidia na hii ndio tunaisema utalii wa kidini watu wengi hawafahamu kwamba kwenye dini kuna utalii vile vile there is a tourism also in islam but good tourism kul siru fil ardi go in the land in the world and see matters it's a tourism ni kujifunza ni utalii huo lakini sisi tukisema utalii siku hizi manake ni kuja watu wakavaa nguo za vichupia wakakaa uchi wakafanya ufuska wakafanya starehe wakaspendi ndio maana ya utalii unaojulikana sasa hivi lakini kumbe hata kufanya ziara ukaenda Bait al-Muqaddas inakuwa ni namna ya utalii ukaenda Misri Egypt ukaona habari za Firauni alipoangamia nao ni uta utalii ukajifunza mambo ya ulimwengu lakini maana ya utalii imeharibika sasa imekuwa ni maana mbaya 
the concept of tourism now has been corrupted. When you say tourism, it means European people coming naked, going here and there, doing wrong. That is a tourism. It's not only that. Tourism also is to go anywhere and to study matters, to study the world, to study history. That is also tourism. Kulshiru eh? filaru. Sema nendeni katika dunia. Nendeni katika dunia. Mwenye zungu kuna sema nyingi. Anasema kulshiru filaru. Sema nendeni katika nini katika dunia. Na hapa vile vile kulshiru filaru. Sema nendeni katika dunia. Fanduru basiti zameni. Kaifa kana. Vipi ilikuwa. Akibatul mujirimina. Hatma ya wafunja sharia mwenye zungu. Nendeni mkatizamu. Vipi ilikuwa kaifakana vipi ilikuwa akibatu hatma au mwisho almujrimina mwisho wa vunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu mujrim ni mvunja sheria na kwenye Qur'ani akitajwa mujrim mvunja wa sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu innal mujrimina hakika wavunja sheria nani ya Mwenyezi Mungu hawataki kuifuata sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu katika huu ulimwengu wanataka waishi kama wanavyotaka wao kwa akili zao wakati Mwenyezi Mungu ndo kaumba ulimwengu na ndo kawapa kila kitu ikiwemo hiyo akili sasa kawapa mwongozo wa kuishi lakini hawataki kuutumia unataka kuzivunja sheria zake Zikul siru fil ardi sema tembeeni katika hii dunia nendeni sehemu mbalimbali fanduru mkatizame kaifa kana vipi ilikuwa akibatu hatma au mwisho almujrimina wa wavunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu. Katizameni Firauni aliyoivunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu alimalizika vipi? Katizameni Namrud aliyovunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu alimalizika vipi? Katizameni wakina Karun waliovunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu walimalizika vipi? Katizameni Haman aliyovunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu alimalizika vipi? Katizameni Sadbeka aliyetamba akaivunja sheria ya Mwenyezi Mungu kamalizika vipi? Lakini kama hiyo ni mbali sana katizameni Hitler alivyofanya na ile mkuta katizameni Mussolini alipofanya kamtizameni Francis Francisco Tito alichokifanya na 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 hata Joseph Stalin na aliyoyafanya via elenini ingawa wengine tukiwasema baadhi ya watu watakasirika lakini yako mambo wameyafanya na hatima zao zinajulikana zilivyokuwa nyendeni katizame madikteta watemi na watu wa namna hiyo walimalizika eh Noriega wa Nicaragua alichokifanya na mambo yale mkuta na mengi na mengi na mengi. Haya. Hmm. Kwa hivyo kutembea na kujifunza mambo ya Mungu kunasaidia kurudisha moyo nyuma ukamkumbuka nani Mwenyezi Mungu. Qul siru saygo fil ardi in the land fanduru suluk kaifa kana how it was aqibatul mujrimin the end of law of law breakers the the end of law breakers Don't, they broken the law of god they didn't follow which allah wants them to follow go and see their end how it was like a pharaoh like sadbeka like haman like karun like abu jahal and many 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 in every century you will find them wanaambiwa makafiri zaidi kul siru fil ardi kuliko sisi sisi tunaweza kwenda tukaangalia tukapata tu zaidi kujifunza lakini wa makafiri walitakiwa watazame zaidi haya kwa sababu utawala wa maka ulikuwa unaongozwa na makuraishi wakati ule ukimpinga mtume salamu haukuwa na nguvu kama alizokuwa nazo firauni wa misri kwa wakati wake enza nabii musa kwa sababu firauni wa misri alitoa amri watoto wachinjwe wanaozaliwa wa kiume na wakao wanachinjwa maka ikufikia hatua hiyo hawakuweza kutoa amri ya kuchinja walikuwa wao mmoja mmoja wakiwanyonga watoto wa kike wanaowazaa lakini haikuwa amri ya dola yao ilikuwa ni vitendo walifanya baadhi yao tu kwa hivyo firauni alikuwa zaidi ana nguvu kuliko utawala wa maka pharaoh was more powerful in the time of prophet moses then the leadership of quraysh in mecca in the time of prophet muhammad peace be upon him so this order is directing to them that go and see history there were kings and more powerful than you and they did big wrong but what was their end 
and you also people of Mecca if you continue to do wrong against Prophet Muhammad and his fellows it will reach to you the same punishment or the same thing tumefahamia na vizuri hapo kwa hivyo anaambiwa walinganishe watizame mambo yalivyotokea duniani ili waweze kujifunza wako watu waliojigamba wakatamba katika ulimwengu lakini mwisho mambo yamefanyaje yamewashinda Halafu sasa aya inamwelekea Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam wala tahzan alayhim wala usihuzunike kwa ajili yao hawa Anaambiwa Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam asihuzunike kwa ajili yao na Muislamu yoyote naye asihuzunike kwa ajili yao wala tahzan alayhim wala usihuzunike kwa ajili yao hawa kwamba kwa nini hawakuamini hawasikilizi hawafahamu na ni ndugu zako jamaa zako lugha moja wengine mmecheza pamoja mmekuwa pamoja mmeoleana mashemegi wakwe wajomba mashangazi mababa wadogo mababa wakubwa kwa ni Abu Lahab kwa mtume ni nani Siami yake baba yake mdogo lakini hakumwamini paka kaangamia Abu Jahl ni mjomba wa mama yake yeye anamuita babu kwani wale ni watu wenyewe kwa wenyewe baina Uislamu na makafiri wa mwanzo hasa pale maka walikuwa ni wenyewe kwa wenyewe hasa mtume alikuwa anaumia sana kwa nini hawa ni damu yangu watu wangu wananipinga kwa kiwango hichi na kunifanyia wadui anahuzunika lakini Mwenyezi Mungu anambia usihuzunike Usihuzu kwa ajili ya wajamaa zako ndio mapambano yalivyo na unajua akikupinga mtu wako unaumia kwa kweli kama mimi nikipingwa na hali ya dinani naumia sana na nikipingwa na yule ndugu yake naumia sana kwa sababu watu wangu wa karibu natoa mfano tu kwa sababu mmoja wao yupo hapa au nikipingwa na Usama mentalia mtu wangu wa wa karibu Nochata kusema ukipingwa na mtu wako wa karibu inakuuma sana kuliko kupingwa na mtu wa nini mtu wa mbali Asa mtume mbwa wala tahzan alayhim usipate uzuni kwa sababu yao hao wao kupinga na ni wako watu wako wa karibu Don't be sad because of them You know uh, Prophet Muhammad was very sad because those they oppose him most of them in Mecca were his relatives Whether uncle or uncle of mother There is a relation between them. So it pains, eh? If the one who opposes you is far from you, you don't have relation with him. You don't mind. But if he is closer to you, like you is smell of mangochi, if you oppose me, ah, I will be very sad. Because you are a close person to to me. So prophet had a sadness because of 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 those opposers are his relatives allah says don't be sad because of them wala tahzan alayhim wala usihuzunike nao usiumie roho kwa sababu ya hawa japo kwa ni jamaa zako ndio mapambano kazi ni ngumu wala taku fi dhaitin wala takun hapa kuna sehemu nyingine inakuja wala taku hapa kuna nuni eh binad nan nikumbuka wala taku iko moja bila ya nun Sijui kwa hiyo sura gani? Hebu mjaribu kukumbuka eh? Eh? Maryam, wala taku fi dhaitin au wala ile mba, zile mbali ziko nyingine moja wala taku bila wala takun. Sijui kwa wapi nikumbuka. Lakini hii wala takun Tumefahamiana? Wala usiwe fi dhaitin katika dhiki mimma yamkurun dhidi ya mikakati wanayoiweka. Isikupe dhiki. Usihangaike baadaye utaitafuta binadamu nani. Tusome kwanza. Lakini nakumbuka ipo. Surat Nahl inasemaje hebu isome. Nahl wala taku fi dhaiqin mimma yamkurun aya ngapi? Apili kabla ya mwisho second watori kwenye Nahl. Mwisho mwisho chini huko kabisa eh? Mimi nakumbuka wala taku fi dhaiqin ipo 
مما يمكرون ابي نا hapa wala takun fi dhaikhin mimma yamkurun zinakubalika kwenye lugha hizo kuondoa ile nun katika takun ikiwa ni majzumun kwa la nahiya kama hiyo au lam au nyinginezo wala takun au wala taku na kwenye qiraa wakati mwingine unakuta zimesomwa njia zote zote mbili umehakiki nayo eh wala taku fi dhaikhin mimma yamkurun hivi hivi katika nahl the one before the last in nahl wala taku fi dhaikhin mimma yamkurun and here wala takun eh is to recite eh you can recite taku and takun this is takun eh but the meaning is the same wala takun fi dhaikhin wala usiwe katika kibano kwa maneno ya vijana siku hizi kibano ndio dhaiki ndio ile le dhiki usiwe katika dhiki dhaiki kibano unajua kuwa katika kibano maka tumemweka kwenye kibano hatoki hawezi kuondoka hapo kabano akapigwa pini sema kuna mtu mwenyeambia shem saba wakati mwingine unaitafsiri Qur'ani kwa maneno ya kihuni kwa ni kibano ni neno la kihuni au watumiaji ni rika la vijana zaidi kibano si neno la kihuni wala si matusi tumeweka kwenye kibano lakini si lugha ya rika la watu wazima si lugha inayotumiwa rasmi katika mambo makubwa ya kitaifa hiyo sawa lakini si lugha ya kihuni kibano wala taku fi dhaikhin wala usiwe katika kibano wala takun fi dhaikhin usiwe katika kibano yani usiwe katika dhiki usipate tabu mimma yamkuruna dhidi ya mikakati wanayoiweka wanaweka mikakati mibaya mibaya lakini wewe sikupe shida tena wanaokuwekea mikakati hiyo mibaya au mipango mibaya mibaya wanaokuwekea ni hao hao jamaa zako na hilo ndio linaloumia kwamba wewe unataka kuposa mahala alafu anayekwenda kukuharibia mjomba wako. Msema yule mwanangu mwenyewe mtoto wa dadangu msimpe ana hawezi kuoa mke huyo. Si lazima ikuume. Kwamba mjomba ndo anayekwenda kunitilia mchanga kitumbu wa changu. Hi. Mambo gani haya? Au unataka kupindua meza sasa miguu iwe juu na utako uwe chini. Mshafahamu maana kupindua meza? Mzigo anautaka yeye. <laughs> wala taku fi dhaikhin mimma yamkurun eh? and don't be in disturbance eh? against their strategies against their plan don't be in disturbance just relax and do your things wala takun fi dhaikhin usiwe katika kibano usiwe katika dhiki usiwe katika shida usipate taabu mimma yamkuruna dhidi ya mipango wanaoifanya au kwa neno la leo mikakati wanayo iweka unajua mkakati strategy unapanga kwamba tufanya hivi alafu likitokea hivi tutafanya hivi likifikia hivi tutafanya hivi unausoma mpango mzima mwanzo mpaka mwisho unaitwa mkakati strategy anapewa moyo katika hiyo aya ya sabini eh? mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam ili awe imara katika kazi ya dawa this verse strengthen prophet give gave him power to to do eh? which allah ordered him to to do wa yaquluna na wanasema katika inda zao na kejeli wanasema katika inda zao na kejeli inda ni nini inda kumfanyia mtu jambo solitaka mara kwa mara na kwa makusudi kama una tumbo la gesi alafu unapiga mashuzi mwenzako ambaye bwana hebu kakae kule bwana unatukera unatoa jingine la pili buu e bwana hatutaki bwana asikilizeni na hili basi piu sasa hiyo ndo inda kumfanyia mtu kitu asichokitaka mara kwa kwa mara wanamfanyia inda alafu kejeli maana ke ni dharau ya lile anole liamini yeye alafu nalichukua lile lakini nalifanya kuwa jepesi kwa sababu ah bwana tunadai mafao yetu bwana wamesema watatupa eh, hivi karibuni sema he he nataka nione ile horofa utakaloliporomosha unaona sasa hiyo kejeli wewe unazungumzia mafao yeye anazungumzia horofa kwa ni umeambiwa kuwa akipata mtu mafao yake lazima akaporomoshe horofa eh, hizo sasa hizo kejeli kwenye lile lile anoliamini unalichukua alafu unaliendeleza lakini katika namna kumuonesha hakuna chochote tumefahamiana au 
umepeleka posa kwa mtoto mweupe mweupe hivi na wewe ni mweusi sema eh mwaka huu nataka nione hayo mahindi na machini atakapozaliwa hayo nakuwa ni kejeli msizifanye hizi kejeli nazitolea mifano tu eh si mimi si mfanyaji wa kejeli lakini katika kufahamisha na bila lazima tutoe mifano tumefahamia na vizuri hapo au wewe unamuhimiza mwenzio bwana teme sala tukasala nini eh na huko peponi unataka uwe na kijiji nini sasa hizo nazo anakufanyia nini kejeli katika mambo ya ya ibada basi usiwe katika dhiki dhidi ya wanao ya wayaquluna mataadha alwaadu na wanasema lini ahadi hii unaoisema in kuntum sadiqina ikiwa nyinyi ni wasema kweli kwamba iko siku Mwenyezi Mungu atatufufua atatulipa kuna kiyama kuna nini ahadi hiyo lini itatokea ndio kejeli yenyewe hicho kiyama kitakuja lini Unao ratiba yake wewe? Kalenda ushaandika. Umeona? Ni maneno ya kejeli ke? Kejeli nadharau. It's a word of mockery. You know mockery. Eh? Huh? So wayaquluna mata hadha alwaadu and they say when this promise will be fulfilled. When it will be the last day of the world. When it will be the day of the judgment. They say it mockery just they joking they just they laughing against, eh? in kuntum sadiqin if you are truthfully saying that there is an end of this world when it's just to make a muslim disappoint by that statement qul sema wajibu washenzi hawa wenye kuleta dharau na kejeli wajibu usiwaache piga nyundo kwenye kichwa maliza tu asa huenda aniyakuna ikawa radifa lakum kimepakiwa kwenu mshabebeshwa hicho radifa manake kitu kilichopakiwa kwenye ile hadithi anasema na si ibn masudi yule katika atar bain nawa ikahitaja kuntu radifa nabiyyi sallallahu alaihi wasallam niko nimepakiwa na mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam kwenye mnyama ilikuwa punda au farasi akanambia hivi akanambia hivi radif manake uliyempakia kama kwenye boda boda yule aliyemweka nyuma ndio anaitwa radif tumefahamiana radif alakum sema kimepakiwa kwenu yani huko mnako kwenda safarini mne kibeba hicho kiyama chenu hiyo hadi mnatembea naye oh unajua mtu akipakiwa mzigo manake ni kwamba ndio kila anako kwenda yuko nao ana wajibu Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kuwa wao wameleta kejeli yanajibu kwa maneno makali kabisa yanarudisha ile ile kejeli hapo lakini usiseme kwa uhakika sana kula asa sema huenda maana ukisema kimepakiwa kwenu itakuwa kama mtume sasa wewe ndo Mwenyezi Mungu mwenyewe weka kidogo ile ya asa lakini asa ni neno lenye matumaini sio neno lenye kukatisha nini tamaa Asa ni jambo linalotarajiwa kwa matumaini makubwa sana. Asa na la Allah zinakuja hivi. Kula asa sema huenda. Radifa lakum aniyakuna iwe hiyo ahadi mnoifanyia kejeli radifa lakum imepakiwa kwenu baadhi ladhi kwa baadhi yale ambayo tastaajilu na mnayofanya haraka si lazima yote baadhi yake ni kwa shapakiwa maana kama unasema vipi e bwana si tumekuagiza generator wewe kutoka dubai mbona alijafika sema lishapakiwa maana kani ni kama generator shapakiwa huko dubai maana kani liko njiani linafanyaje linakuja na kwamba matumaini sasa huenda yale mnayofanyia kejeli kiyama asu kuchindwa asu nini huenda angalau baadhi ya mnayofanyia haraka huenda Mwenyezi Mungu keshapakia yako njiani anakuja Imefahamika hiyo lugha? Manake hayako mbali sana haya mnayofanyia kejeli nyinyi. Na kweli mengine kayapakia kwa sababu vita vya Badr wakauliwa wale wanaofanya kejeli wote. Vita vya Uhud wengine wakapigwa kamalizwa. Ukombozi wa Maka wakaaibika kabisa kwa sababu walikuwa ishapakiwa kabla ya kiyama. Mengine Mwenyezi Mungu akishayapakia yanakuja yako njiani. It's a matter of time. Ni jambo la muda tu. Muda wake bado ulikuwa hujafi. Haujafika. Tumefahamiana? Kola asa sema huenda aniyakuna ikawa radifa lakum yamepakiwa kwa ajili yenu baadhi ladhi baadhi yale ambayo tastaajiluna mnayofanyia haraka yako njiani na kuja msini harakishi 
Eh? The reply comes, Qul, say, the order is directed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Qul, say, Asa, maybe, hopefully, the word Asa, it gives whole hope to a thing can happen anytime. And like me, I say, Asa, hopefully, you will marry here. You will marry in Zanzibar. There is no hope. Anasema hakuna matarajio ye kuo hapa. Ataki kabisa. You will marry in Mangochi. And me. Atamia atinkawe kwa huko malawi. Mnani rusu. Ntakuenda mimi. Nataka lakini manamki mwenye kiuno kikubwa. Pale mlangoni kupita wea na jishauri. Kama umefunguliwa mmoja. Kwa mmoja nitafutia huyo siyo hui kwenye. Tumelewana. Kafurai. Tuna mfuraisha hili ya hisi na ye yumo ndani ya jamii yetu. Asijia kaisi tunasoma siya lafu tunamtenga. Kula asa sema huenda aliakuna radifa lakum kwa mba kitakuwa kimepakiwa kwenu. Say hopefully it is already been carried for you. That promise you make mokari is been carried for you. Like as you said my father is going to send to me laptop for example. So it been carried. Eh? In the car or in the plane, it comes. Eh? There is a hope. Ready for lakum. Ba'adhu sam, Allah zi tastajilun, which you make hurry to get it. They make hurry in mokari. As I say, if you have 100,000 shillings, give me right now. That hurry is just mokari because I know you have nothing. Even 100, you don't have now. You have? No, like I have. Kwa hivyo, wanaifanyia kenye lile. Nakuambia huenda ikawa, kime ya mepakiwa, angala ubaazi, yale mnoe fanyia haraka. Teyari yako kwenye maandalizi, yanafanyaje, yanakunye zaki. Moja hilo na kushindo pita babati. Na kesi ya Walid bin Mughira, na kifo kulicho mkuta, katafuna nafisi. Kaliwe nafisi. Mukiambua kubari za Walid bin Mughira, na kenye lizake zote, na jinsi ya liko kufa, utecheka. Siku ya kiyama, alafuza kufuka ndani ya tumbo la fisi. Kwa hivyo fisi ya fufuliwa kwanza, alafu ndo, hapatikane nani, walibi mwini. Shenzi ule. Wa inarabaka na hakika mula wako la dhufadli na ala nasi. Ni mwenye salio kwa watu, walakini na kisara umla ya shukuruna, lakini wengi wa hoa shukuru. Tuasema fotli, katika kiswali cha sasa, ni salio. Kiswali cha zamani, tumechukua vile vile kiarabu. Wa ina rabaka na kika mula wako, na zuu fotli ni mwenye fadhila, ala nasi kwa watu. Na sisi watu wa zanzima, tukusema hivyo hivyo, fadhila watu watu wanafahamu. Nini maana fadhila? Mana ya mtu alia kufadhili, mana kenini? Kakufanyia mazuri, mengi sana, ndo kakufadhili. Mpaka tukatengeneza kiswali cha kiarabu, wa mamfadhala kafakadi pundaka. Yuhu wako watu wako kusema zamani Mamfatha laka fakadi pundaka Alia kufadhili kisha kufanya punda wewe wake Mamfatha laka fakadi pundaka Nangina sema wafatha laka wapundaka Siyu kime tengenezo wa vipi kile Kiarabu ya kiswaili umundani Hakikai mzuri wafatha laka wapundaka Hakifati sarufi ya lugha yote Si ya kiswaili wala ya kiarabu Sukuma tuende tu Lakini doa isha same out. Fadlin tunaita salio. Sasa hivi kiswaili ichi cha salio. Ngobebu nipe simi yako. Nipige limo salio. Awe tuanga tu. Limo salio la kutosha. Surplus. Katika mambo economics inaitua surplus. Surplus manake nini? Manake mtu kwa mfano kwa siku. Anaitaji kutumia elfu kumi. Na ye kwa siku anapata elfu shirini. Kwa hivyo le salio lake ni sawa na matumizi, matumizi yake. Mwangina ya tumia elfu kumi ya napata salathini. Salio ni marambili ya nachotu, tumia. Na huo ndo msingi wa utajiri. Matajiri siku zote ni wale ambao, wanacho kitumia kwa siku ni kidogo kuliko kinacho ingia. Wanacho kitumia kwa wiki ni kidogo kuliko kinacho ingia. Wanacho kitumia kwa mwezi ni kidogo kuliko kinacho ingia. Wanacho kitumia kwa mwaka ni kidogo kuliko kinacho ingia. Ya kuna matajiri kwa siku wanatumia milioni. Wapo, mili kwa siyamini. Lakini mi wanshudia. Tena tena nchi yetu wapo. Lakini nchi za nchi ndiyo zaidi. Kwa siku wanatumia milioni. Wewe 
tangu unazaliwa mpaka unakaribia kufa uje kuitia mkononi shilingi milioni moja. Yeye yeah, anaitumia kwa siku. Umeelewa? Hmm. Sasa yule ndio ana surplus, ana salio ndio fadhili. Sasa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu usipime kwa sababu vitu vyote ni vyake. Hapungukiwi na chochote. La du fadhili Mwenyezi Mungu ndio mwenye salio. Wewe binadamu ukitamba kwa Mwenyezi Mungu anaweza kukuufisha wewe ukafli ya mbali alafu akaumba kumi kama wewe kwa dakika moja wakazaliwa wote. Una nini za kutamba mbele Mwenyezi Mungu? Kitu gani? Mwenyezi Mungu ana salio kubwa. Uwezo wake leo utumia ni mdogo 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 mno kuliko uliobakia ambao hakuutumia. Angetaka tupate watoto kwenye panda ya mti ingekuwa mtu anakwenda akipiga ponyeto kwenye panda ya mti pa 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 alafu anamwagilia maji mezi tisa anakwenda anasikia mtoto analia na na anabeba na kwenda zake Yakesema I was stuck taratibu taratibu muone Usifikirie mambo mengine Mwenyezi Mungu anaweza akafanya anavyotaka Kamumba Adam bila ya kuwepo binadamu yoyote kabla yake Kaanza naye Alafu akamwambia hawa hali kadhalika. Alafu akaanza utaratibu wa kupata watoto. Tukenda na kwamba mwanamke na mwanamme ndio patikane mtoto. Akaja kwa Nabii akakata. Akasema mwanamke pekee akataleta mtoto. Sitaki mwanamme. Na akitaka na mwanamme pekee akalete mtoto anaweza. Hatobeba mimba atampigisha ponyeto ngoma imekosha. Sasa Mwenyezi Mungu anaweza kufanya lolote analotaka. Katoa mafunzo kwenye magogo. Gogo linaoza na toka funza. Nani alipeleka mbegu pale? Uyoga. Gogo linaoza unatoka uyoga. Nani kalima uyoga? You know mushroom? Eh? It comes from rotten wood. That is a way of Allah to bring things up. Without seed Without anything, it comes. So Allah can do whichever He wants to do. In any way. So He has a surplus. Big surplus. He can do anything you imagine, you don't imagine, He can. He can create a leg on your head. He can create a leg on your head. Ala kulli shay'in qadir eh asipime wallahu dhu fadlin na Mwenyezi Mungu ni mwenye salio and Allah has a surplus ala nasi over people walakin aktharahum la yashkurun but most of them they don't thank him they don't thank Allah most of them this is our problem hili ndio tatizo letu sisi hatumshukuru Mungu kwa sababu hatumjui Mungu hatumtambui Mungu na mambo aliyoyafanya kwa tunakuwa wagumu sana wa shukrani si za mdomo wala za vitendo ya shukrani ya mdomo ndio hiyo alhamdulillah lakini shukrani ya vitendo ni kuyafanya yale anayotaka na kuacha yale aliyoyaka aliyokataza there is two kind of thanking Allah one is using your mouth and say alhamdulillah but another is to apply to do which Allah wants you to do and to avoid which Allah wants you to avoid that is another kind of thanking Allah and that is the most important then the first one when you say alhamdulillah alhamdulillah then you fornicate what is it alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you steal what is it alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you kill what is it alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you lie what is it it's nothing Unasema alhamdulillah kwa mdomo unafanya dhambi zote. Ndio nini sasa? Ndio unafanana sasa na Waarabu wengine siku hizi Waarabuni yale maneno ya kidini wamefanya kama vikorombwezo tu. Mpirani anatangaza mpira sema gol! Wallahi alazim! Gol! Wallah! Wallah! Gol! Eh, haya angalau hapo kamtaja Mungu kwenye goli. Aweza kupita mwanamke anaziga yule. Allah! Allah! Mashallah! Sasa unamtaja Mungu kwenye jambo lile mkosoni nini? Utaona kama nzuri lakini alafu zikuwa kama kejeli maneno matakatifu eh? 
Yesi we namna hii. Lazima tumshukuru Mungu kwa maneno na vii na vitendo. Kwa hivyo hapa anasema wengi wao hawashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu si kwa maneno wala kwa vitendo. Na kwenye vitendo ndio pana usugu hasa angalau hapo kwenye maneno. Wa inna rabbaka na hakika Mola wako la ya'lamu ma tukinu suduruhum anajua kinachofichwa na vifua vyao wa ma yu'linun na kile wanachokidhirisha. Mwenyezi Mungu anajua yanayofichwa na yanayodhirishwa. Wa inna rabbaka na hakika Mola wako la ya'lamu kweli anajua ma tukinu suduruhum vinavyofichwa na vifua vyao wa ma yu'linun na wanavyovitangaza ilani ni kutangaza alana yu'linu ilan maana yake kutangaza na tukinu suduruhum kuficha au aknantum fi anfusikum au mmeficha katika nafsi nafsi zenu wa laysa alaykum junahun fi ma aknantum fi anfusikum na kuna ubaya kwenu katika ile mliyoficha kwenye nafsi zenu lakini katika eneo jingine sasa Mwenyezi Mungu anayajua yale ambayo yanafichwa na vifua vyao yani kwa maana wanadhibiti kwenye nyoo zao hawataki yajulikane Mwenyezi Mungu anayajua yani wewe ukifikiri ukiwaza tu hata kama hujasema Mwenyezi Mungu aishafahamu na aishajua nini unafikiri na nini unataka kusema na kile unachokitoa wazi kikaonekana pia Mwenyezi Mungu obvious anakijua bila shaka yote kwa hivyo elimu ya Mwenyezi Mungu haina mipaka kama elimu yetu sisi sasa hivi wewe unalofikiria kwenye kichwa chako si rahisi mimi kulijua. Na mimi nikikaa hapa kwa dakika moja tu nikafikiria uwezi kujua Sheikh alikuwa anafikiri nini. Pengine kwa namfikiria mwanamke nataka kumuoa, lakini wewe habari huna. Lakini Mwenyezi Mungu anafanyaje? Anajua. Kuonesha kuwa usiwe na mawazo mabovu, usiwe na mawazo mabaya dhidi ya Mwenyezi Mungu na dini yake na maeneo yake matukufu yote na hata katika vitendo vyako. Usiwe na mawazo haya Mwenyezi Mungu anajua. Na hata ukiadhirisha anajua na hata ukificha wa inna rabbaka and indeed your lord it means allah la ya'lamu knows ma tukinu suduruhum which been put secret in their hearts wa ma yu'linun and which they make it obvious allah knows allah he knows the secret and the obvious which you put it in your chest in your in your heart and don't want to say it you just think about it allah knows what you think about if you think about food now allah knows that you think about eating but me i don't i don't know and you you don't know what i think if i pause here for a second or for a minute you'll say hey sheikh pause there for a minute what is that you don't know you don't know it eh? but allah knows and which you make it obvious Of course Allah knows it. So you cannot cheat him. You cannot lie to him. Wa ma min ghaibati na kuna kisichoonekana au kilichopotea fi samaa'i wal ardhi katika mbingu na ardhi illa fi kitabi mubin. Isipokuwa kiko katika kitabu chenye kubainisha. Mwenyezi Mungu ana kumbukumbu zake. Wa ma min ghaibati na hakuna kilichopotea au kisichoonekana ghaba ya ghibu kupotea au kutoonekana wama min ghaibatin na kuna chochote kisichoonekana au kilichopotea fi samai katika mbingu wal ardhi na katika ardhi illa isbukuwa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu fi kitabi mubin kiko katika maandiko yenye kubainisha kitu hichi ni kitu gani kina uzito gani cha rangi gani kiko mahala gani kimekwenda kukaa hapo muda gani na mpaka sasa hivi kina muda gani tangu kimekaa hapo yote yako kwenye kitabu chenye kubainisha sasa elimu ya Mwenyezi Mungu ni pana mno anatuonesha Mwenyezi Mungu vipi anajua mambo wallahi lazim wewe binadamu unaweza kukiweka kitu nyumbani kwako ukakitafuta wiki nzima usikione tena umo ndani nyumbani kwako wewe chako mwenyewe na umekiweka mwenyewe na ukakaa wiki nzima unakitafuta umesahau umekaa wapi usikione eskuweja <laughs> kuna mtu mmoja aliyemewa alikuwa na kalamu basi 
Kaichukua kalamu kaikamata mkono kushoto sema si kalamu yangu hata siko wapi yake. Alafu anaiweka huko. Sioni akitaka aki mkono kushoto kaileta mkono kulia. Akitaka mkono kulia kaileta mkono kushoto. Anaweka kwenye meza anaanza kujisearch kwenye mfuko ile kalamu yangu iko wapi? Alafu anaichukua anaiweka tena. Eh? Mkambe wewe leo umeanza kugua kichaa katika hatua za mwanzo. Kalamu yako sio hiyo hapo unaipindua pindua ukipeleka huko huko. Eh, eh bwana yamenitoka kabisa. Binadamu akiemewa anaweza kukumbana na mambo ya ajabu. Tumefahamiana lakini kwa Mwenyezi Mungu hakuna kinachokutea. Wa ma min ghaibati. Na kuna lisilojulikana ulilopotea fi samai katika mbingu wal ardhi na ardhi illa fi kitabi mubin. Yesu kwa limu ndani ya kitabu chenye kubainisha Mwenyezi Mungu kwake ana kumbukumbu ya kile kitu. Wa ma min ghaibati. And, and there is no losing thing losing thing fi sama in the sky wal ard and in the land illa except fi kitabi mubin it is in the in, in the in the uh, in the book eh? kitab and mubin is uh, what to say uh, mubin is uh, discovering book discovering book if you find something and you don't see it allah knows where it is if it is in the land or it is in the in the sky yourself can put thing in your own room and try to find it for hours and you don't see it eh? but allah knows where it is if it is in the land or it is in the anything this is a vast knowledge of allah without limitation good in hadha al qur'an hakika hii qur'ani ya qusu inasimulia qasa ya qusu qasas masimulizi visa inasimulia unajua kusimulia maana yake inaeleza tukio kwa mtiri kwa mtiririko ndio sema kisa cha nabii Musa kisa cha nabii Isa kisa cha nabii Yusuf kisa ule ndio qasas لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولل الباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء كتبه في سبيعه بس مولزي أوكم يكون ما زينغتيه سي حديثي زكبوني وات إن هذا القرآن هكذا القرآن يقص إن السيموليه indeed this Quran tells tells about history of prophets history of the world what will happen in the day of the judgment it tells you know telling into details until you understand the matter as it is giving stories eh, of many things this quran tells ala bani israel to the sons of israel kwa wana wa israeli hasa kwa sababu wana wa Israeli wao wana Talmudi, wana Taurati, wana Zaburi, wana visa vya manabii mbali, mbali mbali. Sasa walikuwa wanatukoga, unajua kutukoga, wanaringa kusema haya mambo hawayajui wengine. Tunayajua sisi tu. Sasa Mwenyezi Mungu akaleta kwenye Qur'an. Na wakati wa Mtume Sala Salam hajui Kiisraeli, Kiebrania, hajasoma vitabu vyao, hajafundishwa na wao, kayajua wapi? Na yametolewa yale yale yaliyo ndani ya vitabu vya na wakati huo ilikuwa kopi za vitabu vyao hazisambazwi. Kitabu chao kinabaki kule kule kwenye hekalu. Kama iwe sasa hivi msikitini kuna msafu mmoja tu. Kila msikiti una msafu huu. Ukitaka wewe unakwenda msikitini unamwomba imamu, naomba nichungulie katika sura tu sura kuna nini. Ndio ilikuwa. Hawatembei na matabu yao hivi mpaka iwe wale wakubwa na walikuwa wana mabuku tele kama salil himari ahmilu wanampakia punda kubeba vitabu tu lakini vilikuwa vinakaa vinakomewa vinafungiwa utafikiri waraka wa nyumba au gamba la gari hatembei nalo mtu lakini Qurani imekuja ikawa inapatikana kwa kila mtu tena wao ndio wakaona muhimu wa kusambaza vile vitu so Mwenyezi Mungu anasema inadha alqur'ana 
hakika Qurani ya kuswala bani Israila inawasimulia wana wa Israili aksara mengi alladhi hum fi yakhtalifuna ambao ndani yake wanatofautiana wenyewe kwa wenyewe au wanatofautiana na watu wengine itakavyokuwa Qurani inayatajia mpaka ile maeneo ya tofauti yale na kuyaurekebisha kuyaweka sawa. Mengine wao wenyewe hawajawa wamoja. Qurani inawaonyesha kwamba hii ndio njia sawa sawa. Mmetofautiana katika visa. Na masimulizi. Kwa Qurani imekuja inanyoosha mambo. Tumelewana? In hadha al-Qur'an, indeed this Qur'an yaqusu tells eh is telling ala bani Israel to the sons of Israel aksara alladhi many of which whom fihi in it they differ yakhtalifun themselves they differ in their books so quran guiding them and telling them that this is the right and this is the wrong and also they differ with muslims quran tells them this is right and this is wrong most of it correcting wa innahu na hakika hii quran la hudan kweli ni mwongozo wa rahmatun na ni huruma lil mu'minina kwa waumini hii Qur'an ni mwongozo huda kule kasema alif lam mim dhalika kitabu la riba fihi hudan lil muttaqin mwongozo indeed this Qur'an is guidance it guides people how to live in this world how to worship Allah which is to be done which is not to be done how relationship between people should be guides is a guidance wa inna hu la huda na hakika hii quran ni muongozo wa rahmatun na ni huruma your favorite football player messi eh you like messi you don't hai la huda ni rahma <laughs> kweli ni muongozo na ni huruma huruma lil mu'minina kwa waumini ni rehma kwao kwa sababu wangeachwa na ujinga bila Qur'ani ingekuwa kazi ngumu kwa sababu wana wa Israeli wanajitapa na vitabu walivyo navyo halafu wenyewe hawataki kufundisha watu sikwambie hao watu wa jamii nyingine wanazidi kwa dharau na kusema Mungu katupenda sisi tu nyinyi watwana mtabidi mtutumikie watumwa wetu wanaficha mambo sasa Mwenyezi Mungu ukakileta Qur'ani we huruma hawa wanyonge nao wapate kuyasikia na wataka Mwenyezi Mungu na kuyafata na watukuke Israeli walikuwa na tabia kuficha elimu na mpaka leo wanaficha. Watukfuna kathiran. Watukfuna na mnaficha mengi. Hawapendi kusema ukweli. Ndio kama elimu, elimu za uganga. Elimu za uganga mtu na kitabu chake cha gamba cha nyekundu kwa pani eh? Akakitia kwenye mkoba wakati mwingine. Hataki kuwafahamisha wengine mna nini mle ndani kwa sababu ni uchumi. Tena mkisha kwa nyote mna elimu pesa atazipata wapi? Na kule anadai jogoo jekundu. Anadai mbuzi sasa ikiwa kila mtu anajua kujitibu tena he, atapata wapi vitu? Kwa hivyo anaficha. Na hawa kazi yao ilikuwa kuficha knowledge. Kwa Mwenyezi Mungu akaifanya rehma kwa nani? Kwa waumini. Ina rabbaka yaqdi bainahum bihukmi. Hakika Mola wako atahukumu baina yao kwa hukumu yake. Wasikushughulisha ina rabbaka hakika mola wako yakwi fi ilu mudharin li istiqbali hakika mola wako atahukumu baina hum baina yao hao bani israila bi hukmi hii kwa hukumu yake atajua namna kuwafanya wasikuumize kichwa wacha wajifanye wajuaji wacha wajifanye hivi lakini Mwenyezi Mungu atahukumu baina yao kwa hukumu yake eh Mwenyezi Mungu sio hukumu ya kibinadamu na hukumu ya Mwenyezi Mungu inajulikana wazi kwamba itakuwa ni ya haki na ya usawa na hadanganyiki hakuna ushahidi wa uongo indeed allah will judge between them by his judgment in judgment of allah cannot be cheated allah cannot be bribed eh allah can be not cannot be corrupted so it will be justice 100% wa huwa alazizul alim na yeye ndio mshindi mwenye ujuzi hashindwi na jambo na anajua mambo yote sasa tena kuna tatizo gani ikiwa uamuzi utakuwa ni wake na yeye hashindwi na jambo alazizu mshindi hakuna linalomshinda Mwenyezi Mungu kwamba hii kazi imenishinda Mungu ashindwi halafu isitoshe ala alimu anajua kulikweli kila kitu anakijua hadanganywi zona wasiwasi gani 
There's a question to Ili. Indeed, Allah is most powerful and knowledgeable. So cannot be defeated. Cannot be cheated. Huh? Fatawakala ala Allah. Kwa hivyo, mtegeme mwenyezi mungu, mikakati yao, fitimbi vyao, fujo lao. Kwanza mtegeme nani? Mwenyezi mungu. Halafu tena ndo, wa islamu watakusaidia. Nini? Lile ni jambo la pili. Lakin kwanza mtegeme nani? Allah. Fatawakala ala Allah. Kwa hivyo mtegeme mwenyezi mungu. So you Muhammad depend on Allah. First of all depend on Allah. People will come and help you. But first of all depend on on Allah. Because even people can betray you. But Allah will be with, with you. Fatawakal ala Allah. Basi mtegeme mwenyezi mungu. Innaka ala lhaki mubin. Hakika wewe uko kwenye haki liyo wazi. Sasa tena unawasu wasigani. Na haki yako yuko wazi. Kila mtu wanaijua. Anaitaka tayamini. Asiataka tayacha. Lakini haki yuko wazi. Inaka ala lhaki mubin. Hakika wewe uko kwenye haki liyo wazi. Dahiri kabisa kila mtu wanaijua. Wacha kuogopa. Mtegeme mwenyezi mungu. Indeed you are in the clear right. In the clear right. Obvious. Everyone knows. The one who wants to trust you to believe you will come. And the one who wants to deny you and avoid you will go. But you depend on Allah. Ndomana hii Qur'an ilikuwa tamu muda wote kwa mtume. Salo salamu. Kwa sabu inasema nae kama vile mwenyezi mungu anazumza nae mara kwa? Mara kwa mara kwa hivyo ilikuwa tamu kwa ke. That's why this Qur'an was sweet to Prophet Muhammad. Because it seemed that as if Allah talking to him face to face. Most of that time. That's why he was reciting it most of the time. Because he was understanding it fully. And he was talking to him direct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this Quran. Innaka hakika wewe la tusmi'u al-mauta. Huwa sikilizishi wali okufa. Huwa sikilizishi wali okufa. Wala tusmi'u al-summa. Wala huwa sikilizishi viziwi. Yani wasio sikia. Sikuwezi wapende kuhitu wa viziwi. Wanapenda wa hitu wasio. Wasio sikia. Lakini siya kiswari chetu cha zanzi bacha zamani. Ukisema hui mtoto hasiki. Sio manake kiziwi. Manake mkaidi. Au mtundu. Siju mpaka leo kiswari chetu kipo. Au umie na kisema cha kizamani sana. Bado kinatumika. Mtoto hasiki hui. Sasa. Wakati mgini kuna bazi ya mene kusema hui mtoto hasiki. Mpeleka hospitali. Akapigwe bomba. Hile bomba la masikio kusafishwa. Aa, hatu kusudi ya hasiki kwa maana na ulemavu wa masikio. Tuna kusudi ya ni mkaidi. Kila ukiambiwa usikie, unachize bakora. Kila ukiambiwa usikie, unachize bakora. Inaka hakika wewe Muhammadi, ata wewe muislam, la tusme ulmauta, huwa sikilizishi wali okufa, wala tusme usumma, wala huwa sikilizishi viziwi adwaa wito wa wote idha walau wanapogeuka mudbirina kinyume nyume wanapogeuka kinyume nyume manake huwezi kuwaongoza watu wa siotaka kama mtu hataki jambo hata ukisema vivu utasema mpaka utamaliza ye halitaki sisu wala komba halifahamu uneza kumsaidia kalilua vizuri lakini ndo halitaki sasa unafanyani Sasa mtu na mna hii, anakuwa kafa, ki imani, siyo hajafa kimwili. Na atakuwa kiziwi, siyo kiziwi wa masikio, kiziwi wa kuisikia haki. Tunakupelekeni kwenye lile somuletu, nalulisistiza kila siku. Kwa mba Korani hatuwezi kuitafsiri kwa maana ya kwanza tu katika kila neno na kila mahala. Kuna mewe ngini tunachukua maana ya pili. Na pengine hata maana ya tatu liko eneo unaweza ukachukua lakini maana ya pili ndio sana Sasa kama hapa utasema innaka la tusmi'u al-mauta hakika wewe wasikilizishi waliokufa kwa ni nani asijua kwa waliokufa hawendi kusikilizishwa Na wasikilizishe waliokufa kwa kutarajia nini Kwa ni Mtume Salama alikuwa na tabia ya kwenda kuwatangazia sala walioko makaburini 
alikuwa anakwenda kwenye makaburi ya makafiri kusema jamani semeni ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah awali kwa anawaambia binadamu walioko hai kazi yake alikuwa anafanya ndani ya umma wa watu waliokufa au watu walioko hai sasa kwa nini amwe uwezi kuwasikilizisha waliokufa manaka waliokufa kiimani si wale waliokufa mwili wala tusmi usumma wala uwasikilizishi viziwi kwa ni mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam alikuwa anakwenda kuzungumza na watu wasiosikia au anakwenda kuzungumza na watu wanaosikia kwa masikio yao sasa hawa viziwi gani wale kusudiwa wasiotaka kufahamu mambo maana ngapi ya kwanza au ya pili ya pili sasa kusema kwa Qur'ani muda wote natumia maana ya kwanza na hakuna tawili nani kasema mbumbumbu hawa Wasimshughulishe mtu. Na ndio maana tukasema sisi hatujibizini nao ana kwa ana. Sisi kawaida yetu tunaposomesha likitokea jambo tunafafanua kwa faida ya ile somo, sio kwa malumbano. Sisi wao wamekosa namna wanakaa kazi yao kufanya malumbano tu kufanya malumbano tu. Hatusongi mbele kwa kulumbana. Tuasonga mbele kwa kuelimishana. Tumelewana. Adua wito hapa dua pia imetumika kwa maana ya wito sio dua kwa maana hii ya kuomba a a hapa dua wito kama kama sali allazi yan'iqu bima la yasma'u illa du'aan wa ni wa nida'a wito kwa hivyo uweze kumsikilizisha waliokufa hawa na wale wasiosikia jam'u hii mauta jam'u ya mayyit na sumu jamu ya asam kuwasikilizisha waliokufa na wasiosikia maana viziwi adua uwezi kuwasikilizisha wito idha wallau watakapogeuka mudbiri na kinyume nyume yani pia kugeuka kinyume nyume hapa maana yake hawataki kusikiliza wala kufuata sio maana yake wameugua kinyume nyume wanakupa mgongo katika maana ya kwanza pia maana ya pili kwamba wamegeuka kinyume nyume maana yake hawataki kwa nini sio sawa tunasema tulikuwa pamoja yule tunafanya mambo lakini kanigeuka kakugeuka kafa vipi maana kaka nyuma yako au kakupa mgongo au kakugeuka kachukua msimamo tofauti iko wazi katika lugha wa ma anta na sio wewe bihadil umyi ni mwenye kuongoza wasiona tena hapa umyi jamu ya aama vipofu lakini hawakusudii vipofu wa macho wale ambao hawauoni ukweli kila wakionesha <laughs> ni kambi ni sikumbi kwa tuna seminar wako wasiona akasimama mlema mmoja asiona akasimama mheshimiwa mwenyekiti mimi katika jambo hili naona tufanye hivi watu wote wakacheka kama unaona tena umekuja kwa niaba wale mavu vipi nende zako hakusudii kuona kwa macho anakusudia kuona kwa maana ya kuwa na mawazo au maoni iko wazi andalalatihim huwezi kuongoza wasioona dhidi ya upotofu wao wakiamua kuungangania in tusmi'u huna unemsikilizisha illa man yu'minu bi ayatina isipo yule ambaye anaziamini aya zetu fa hum muslimuna basi watu hao ndio walio salimu amri au walio salimu walio salimu amri yani walio ikubali haki hao ndio unaweza kuwasikilizisha narudia wa ma anta bihadil umyi na sio wewe mwenye kuongoza wasioona haki andalalati dhidi ya upotofu wao huwezi kuongoza hao in tusmi'u huna unemsikilizisha illa man yu'minu bi ayatina isipo yule anayeamini aya zetu fa hum muslimuna basi hao ndio watu waliojisalimisha kwa Mwenyezi Mungu au waliosalimu waliosalim amri wanaikubali haki wakati wote inapojitokeza tufike hapa kwa leo na nimsaidie huyu tu let me help you eh since we said in hadha alquran eh, 76 indeed this quran yaqusu tells ala bani israila to people of son of israel aksara ladhi hum fi yakhtalifuna most of it which they differ eh themselves or against muslims wa innahu and indeed this quran lahuda is a guidance wa rahma and mercy lil mu'minin to believers inna rabbaka indeed your lord yaqdi bainahum bi hukmi will judge between them by his judgment in the day of the judgment it will be it will be right eh wa huwa al azizul alim and he is 
the winner, the winner cannot be defeated. And the alim and full of knowledge cannot be cheated. Winner cannot be defeated. And knowledgeable, have knowledge, full of knowledge, cannot be cheated. So don't think that in the day of the judgment you will de you will defeat Allah. No, never will not happen. Don't you don't think that you will cheat Allah. Mm, full of knowledge. Never. Fatawakkal ala Allah. So depend on Allah. Inna ka'ala al-haqil mubin. Indeed, you are in a clear right. In a clear, and I said, haq mubin. Clear right. In English, you do vice, vice versa. Inna ka'ala tusmi'ul mawta. Indeed, you cannot make dead people listen. Mawta is dead people. You cannot make listen the dead people. But here, the meaning is not dead people, the real dead people are uh, the second meaning. The people, the one they don't have belief, they don't want to think is dead people. Huh? And you will not make here the dumb, you know, dumb and thumb cannot hear. What do you call him? Not them, dumb and thumb. MB. Uh -huh. That is dumb and thumb. Thumb, the one cannot talk. Dumb, the one cannot hear. So he calls them those they cannot hear. It doesn't mean that the real meaning of they don't hear. They don't want to hear. Those are dumb people and thumb. Eh? That, like that summun bukmun. Omyun. Eh? It's not the real one, the second meaning of it. If you don't want to hear something, eh? Is it as if you are dumb, eh? And if you don't want to talk something, as if you are thumb. Fatawak, wala to smell summa. Dua are calling. So you cannot make the dead people understand. And those uh, dumb people hear what you say. A dua, you are calling. Is a wallow when they turn mudbirin, going away. They turn and going, they don't want. It, it means not turning around. Is they don't want the thing. That is the turn and going away. Wama anta, and you are not behadil omi, guider of blinds. Omi are blinds. And here, the blind is not the real meaning of blind. They, those they don't want to see the right way. And the lalatim from their misguidance astray going wrong way in tusmi'u you don't have to make listen illa man yu'minu bi ayatina except the one believes in our verses for whom muslimun those kind of people are muslims or they surrender themselves to allah huh? finish it is our stop for today jazakallahu khairan